So first of all, I want to thank you for inviting me on your program. Yeah. Um, I think that in the agriculture sector now, we are seeing a revolution, so to speak, that uh, we are seeing a lot of activity. And today, more than ever, Guyana has been viewed as a leader in ag agriculture, mm -hmm. especially since His Excellency Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali would have taken the lead or as the lead in agriculture. As I'm speaking now, I have technical teams in Barbados mm -hmm. working there to set up some of their shade houses. Um, whilst I am doing that, Trinidad and Tobago is waiting anxiously for us to send some team here in Trinidad to help them also mm -hmm. in that program. And whilst we have been doing that, I received a call this morning from the Minister of St. Kitts, the mm -hmm. Minister of Agriculture, Mr. Doggins, requesting us to um, send a team there. As a matter of fact, he wants me to go to visit his um, country to see how we can help. So why I'm mentioning these things? I'm mentioning these because in the entire Caribbean now, Guyana is viewed as the mainstay in agriculture. Guyana is viewed as a leader in agriculture, and at the same time, it is viewed as the technical, that we have the technical capability to develop the agriculture sector. And this brings me to your question of the high-value crop. The high-value crop was conceptualized by President Ali and when he was looking at how we can involve young people into agriculture. And I've been making these points around the country whenever, whenever I speak at four different forums. And then the president also himself has been doing this, that we are seeing that more older, mature people are involved in agriculture. Um, we have to have the young people, yes. people who are going to the tertiary institution, and people who have the technical capability, but they are not involved in agriculture. Most of the time you find those persons are be behind a desk, driving agriculture. That is not the place for them. So the idea of bringing these people to attract them in the agriculture sector, as I said, was conceptualized by President Ali. But then we have to have something that can attract them into the sector. That is why we started the high value crops. Things like broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, lettuce, bell pepper. These things are high value in, in terms of, for example, in 2021. We have imported. We had imported close to 2.6 billion dollars in these crops, and at that time, our country, the island gas sector, was just emerging. Mm -hmm. Now we have a, um, at least um, it's almost established already. The island gas sector, where more and more people are coming in into the sector, and then these crops will be in great demands in the island gas sector. But when you look at the, in the hospitality sector, also they are in great demands right now. So that is why we are pushing these high value crops. We have seen last year the earnings were great. To date, um, for the first half of the year, almost or the first quarter of the year, we have seen um, the, the the project that we started at Mandri Pro would have earned over in excess of a million dollars already in these crops. But this is only the this is only the start here. But around the country, when you look around the country, there are large sums of money people are earning, young people are earning. I went to um, as a Cuba coast, I went to Region 3. There are a lot of young people who are involved in these high value crops in shade house crop, and we are helping them and giving the extension services from the Ministry of Agriculture. So, when we talk about high value earnings, mm -hmm. we are just we would just have the figures that the project that we have at right. Man Repo, yeah. but that doesn't encapsulate everything that we are earning in the country. Linden, I went to Linden. I went to Kokwani to have young, bright young people are involved, uh, who are involved in these crops. Now, people are, who are doing the white-collar work, so to speak, who are doing, who are doing clerical and uh, work in offices now are leaving those work and going in to involve because they see, one, they see the attractiveness of this um, area, and at the same time, they see it as, a, as an area that they can have great earning powers. Yeah, yeah. So this is going very well. And I think that this augurs well for us to continue to attract young people into the agriculture sector. Well, when we, when we started it, another project, uh, as I said, that the president would have um, asked me that we, we, we start, and especially for single parents, young, vulnerable, um, single mothers, 
And when we started it, uh, uh, many persons thought that, that this will not be successful. Then we started it in Nari, and today we have a, a lot of young people, young mo single mothers, who are getting help from this project in terms of purchasing rose at a very low cost and selling it back at uh, the markup is a, 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 a very high. To date, the, the Cut Rose project would have earned, for this year, this half of the year, over $4 million already. And we are selling a rose for $500. Imagine that. We are selling a rose for $500, but when the people sell it back out there, it sold for between $1,500 to $2,000. So you're making almost four times, or 300% profit a single mother can make on a rose. And there are great demands for a rose. And when you look around, and, and, and this project hasn't been a project only to do business to earn money. Yeah. This project was a project conceptualized to help people, yeah. to bring people into uh, entrepreneurship, like the young single vulnerable parents, the young mother. And that is the whole concept of this idea. And I think that when you look at it now, we are expanding. We are expanding. For example, when in government, in, in, in government services, a lot of roses now coming out from the cut rose project that we have there. We are supplying. Sometimes we are supplying, giving free roses to a number of uh, area, uh, areas. When we had this, uh, the, uh, the, the strategy, uh, the, um, the pro uh, this issue with the um, the Madia fire, yeah. a lot of roses were, 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 were prepared by Nari. We took roses into Madia. We had the uh, memorial service there. Right, right. right? So, so this project is a project that will help a lot of single parents in the future. And we have um, scope for expansion that we are doing now. And I am um, inviting you that you, when you have time, you could go to visit our Rose Cut Rose mm -hmm. project there. I you'll see, the yeah, day. you'll yeah. see more expansion from yeah. the time you went the last time to now. Mm -hmm. I saw a document. Uh, yeah. I saw a documentary that you did, mm -hmm. but that was a good time ago. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. when you go back there, you'll see bigger roses. Mm -hmm. You'll see different type of roses, and you'll see more attractive roses at our Cut Rose project. So, as the president, um, I think last Friday, last Wednesday, Nothing. when the president did an inter, um, did his press conference, a lot of those information he gives out to members of the public in terms of agriculture, because I was more interested in that part to hear what he said, and he talked about uh, the livestock industry. What we have done recently, last two weeks ago, we had a very successful poultry symposium where poultry owners and poultry producers around the country came at the convention center to look to see how we can enhance and develop the poultry sector. You know, we are self-sufficient now in poultry needs. Mm -hmm. We have to now produce poultry to export in the Caribbean market if you want to reduce the food import bill by 25%. And that was a very successful poultry symposium. A lot of stra um, ideas came about. Uh, how we can reduce the cost of production and increase production. And the government will be helping out in terms of, for example, you know, right now there is a disease that are affecting yeah. birds in the poultry industry. Um, the short name they call it hepatitis. Now, there are some vaccines that the Poultry Producers Association have to purchase to help in the poultry industry. What we will be doing, we will contribute to that. We, the government of Guyana, the president has pronounced and instructed that I make funds available from the Ministry of Agriculture's budget so that we can procure $29 million of those um, vaccines so that we can at least um, vaccinate the poultry, um, pro um, the, deal with that issue yeah. in, in the country. And this year also we are looking to start the breeder program. The breeder program is that where we want to start our own breeding facility in producing our own hatching eggs in the budget presentation. And when I spoke at the budget debate, I said this year we'll do that. So we have funds in the budget and we're starting to do that right now in Guyana. We also have some private farmers who have already embarked on producing their own hatching eggs. And this brings me to the point that you asked, the question that you asked about livestock, what yeah. we are doing with the livestock industry. We have imported in Guyana 75 breeding bulls, which we have distributed across this country, not only in Region 9, but different regions across the country. We want to in, uh, improve the breed of animal that we have in the country. That is why we are distributing these bulls free of cost. 
we are uh, advising farmers to farm themselves into group mm -hmm. so that they can get the benefit of these breeding animals. At the same time, we have started to ramp up our artificial insemination program. That program was there all the time. Mm. But there were a few persons who were benefiting from this program. When I went out on my outreaches around the country, people normally complain that they sometimes they are not getting this facility. So what I did, I asked GLDA to ensure that we do an assessment across the country and where the needs are greater, that we put in the effort to ramp up artificial insemination around the country. That's another program that we are doing. Now, we started a new program. We have signed a contract with a company from Brazil. And you know we have a farm in Ibini mm -hmm. where we have a lot of cattle there. Yeah. Um, the Ministry of Agriculture farm. Now, that program entails to do embryo transplant. This year, we'll, tra we'll do embryo, embryo transplant in almost 300 of our animals mm -hmm. at Ibini. Mm -hmm. These animals, when they uh, get pregnant and they um, deliver um, the calf and so, these will be hybrid animals. So imagine you have 300 and you get another 300 come on and stream. That's the way we are improving, yeah. right? Besides that, with the program that we have, the um, program we have in the Ministry of Agriculture, the President would have visited all the interior locations. And there were needs, there were requests, people made for animals to help them. I myself went after the president would have visited those areas and I delivered to villages in region 9, region 1, region and other regions proper animal, give them proper bread of um, sheep, give them um, piglets and give them breeding bulls and heifers. Mm -hmm. Right? So we got that program going on in the interior location. And another part of the program, the vice president would have um, challenged me that, look, we have to improve on our swine production. That's not a success story, right? Where we are producing constantly, we produce high bred swine. Recently, I will give 50 farmers on the highway free piglets, free piglets. I am now taking that program to Essequibo. And we have the Swine Producers Association that are working with us where we are helping them to get better breed of these swines. That swine farmers in the country now are getting these animals that we are producing. Mm -hmm. And we are working with them not to sell these things and give them. We are working to help them and they are getting it free of cost so that they can themselves produce it. Mm -hmm. And that's the success story of us since we started out in 2020. We have been providing support not only budgetary support to to improve the infrastructure but we have been providing support in various other areas for example in the crops area we have been providing free planting material in the swine area we have been doing that giving farmers those uh, animals so that they can continue to produce because when that happens the country benefits yeah. it. so that is the success story in the livestock sector Started it, it started in region 3, mm. region 2, region 6, okay. region 5, region 9, so mm. all across the country, okay. right? Have, I've been rolling out that program. Mm -hmm. And the swine program started in other regions too. Yeah. And the black giant program has started in the entire country. Mm. Thousands, let me tell you what, over 50,000 black giant we give to the interior location. Mm. In region 1, 7, 8, and 9, mm. right? Imagine that these people get these boards they will come self-sufficient yeah. they will come self-sufficient thousands of boards i myself took it places like maruka mm. places in region one mabaruma places in region nine you know and these people and these are the first time that they are receiving board and these kind of board you know these boards are very um, they, they can withstand the condition yeah. that we have here yeah. and leaving out the interior location right on the coast is a normal activity now for us when people come to the ministry of agriculture they come in for a um, they come in to see if they could get some boards to start the program that we have, yeah. right? So that's a constant um, work we are in progress that we do. So that project is another success project story. You know, 
in um, we we had rice production started in places like um, Santa Fe, right? They used to plant rice there, but because of the condition, yeah. they have abandoned it now. Don't they started to plant soya? Recently, if I don't know if you look at the face, uh, President Facebook page, you would have put up the picture. Mm. Over 500 acres of soya is being yeah, grown yeah. there right now, yeah, yeah. right? So places like Kumu, Moka Moka, um, South Park, um, Deep South, those areas have started the production of rice, mm -hmm. right? Moka Moka, I went myself. They have over um, 10 acres of rice pl being planted there. Kumu, not far away from Moko, Mo Moka Moka, rice is being grown there, the Deep South. And then they, they, they moved and they're also um, looking at Karasabai, Quarry, and those areas, right? So in the Region 9 area, there are a number of villages, a number of districts that are start, have embarked on rice production. Mm. So the future looks very bright because people now in those areas are looking forward to grow their own rice in there. Um, I am looking at the possibility because when I went in there, I am looking at this possibility to see if the ministry can support mm -hmm. the effort. We have been supporting this effort through the, um, the, the, the rice seed, the seed yeah. paddy, and things like that. We have a combining region 9-2, mm -hmm. right? And we have a, a small mill. But I am looking at the possibility of getting some portable, portable rice mill, mm -hmm. right? Because I went to Monkey Mountain mm -hmm. in region 8 to deliver some tractors. And the people there was asking me that let us look at it. I understand Brazil has those um, technology. Mm. I am looking to see if we can put sources from Brazil because they have one in region, right in region 8, Monkey Mountain, but it's not operable presently. Mm. So I'm looking to see if you could get that and within f uh, you could get it uh, like about 5 million Guyana dollars. Mm. Mm. And I think that if we have it and we can get it to Guyana, we can give the villages and they can have their own portable mill yeah. to process the paddy. So the, the, the villages in region 9, they're not having any of the challenges that previously existed in terms of rice production. No, because our extension officers, remember I have our people them working them working them steadily, mm. working with them all the time. Mm. And that is why if there are any issue at all, we normally deal with it at the Ministry of um, Agriculture through the GRD. So officials are always on always the ground, on the ground meeting with them. Yes, so, so, so as, I, as we are speaking here now, the ship is in Barbados. Mm. So I am hoping by next weekend or the following, by next, by this weekend or early next week, mm -hmm. the ship can come here with the uh, remaining set of, um, and, and, that's then, the last set. and then we'll roll out the program, uh, right? Yeah. And that will and that will commence very short. Yes, as we are speaking, and that now we are continuing doing work to start the program. For example, right now we are doing a road at. Um, the place they were, remember when the president was in Barbados, mm -hmm. he committed some he committed land that look so much land must be for young people, right. so much for women, right. and then some young people from Barbados will have also yeah. have fifty acres, right. right? And we are now constructing roads to those locations. Whilst we are speaking, the construction have started. We are now constructing pens to roll out the program, mm -hmm. and at the same time, we have a number of farmers who have registered in this program. We will rule it out and they will continue. So this here, as Prime Minister Motley and our President would have um, agreed to, that we want to create a different brand, a Caribbean brand, a Black Belly brand coming out of Guyana through Barbados Black Belly yeah. to replace the New Zealand lamb and the Australian lamb coming to this part of the world. So I think those are exciting, very exciting things happening. Yeah. And most of those ideas and most of those activities coming from Guyana. Right, are taking are, are taking place in Guyana. Mm -hmm. So that is very good news for us as Guyanese because you know, let me tell you what. When people talk about development in Guyana, they always look towards the island gas sector. Yeah. That this thing, island gas, is so attractive. And I have been saying this thing: island gas is good for us. It will give us a large amount of revenue. But we have to utilize the revenue wisely, like what we are doing presently, to ensure that we develop our country. But we must not lose sight of agriculture. Agriculture was here before any one of us. All our four parents came to this part of the world, from Africa, from India, from China, Portugal, you name it. They came because of agriculture, right? And we have seen every time the PPP civic, uh, or the PPP is in government, we have seen agriculture is moving rapidly, right? We see more budgetary allocation, 
in the agriculture sector. We are, for example, when I became Minister of Agriculture in 2020, we, we have seen uh, um, the, the, the um, budgetary allocation decline, decline in 2015 or the 2014, the last year the PPP was in government, from $18 billion to $13 billion. Today, it's $33 billion. So you could see the improvement in the agriculture sector, and that, doesn't, that is not the real amount that we are expending to. We have more money being expended in the agriculture sector, right? For example, the pre vice president, would have, um, uh, he spoke about the hope, like canals yeah. that we plan to do. Very shortly, we'll do those canals so that we can have um, mitigate flooding in our country. We are looking to develop the mangrove so that we can protect the coast from the encroaching of the sea. These are things that will benefit not only the population now, but for future generations to come. Yeah. And that is why... I am saying, uh, not because I am prejudiced here as Minister of Agriculture, but I want to say that agriculture is attractive, right? Agriculture is attractive, but we have to know how to do it. We can't do it how we used to do it before, or how our four parents used to do it in terms of, um, in, in terms of, uh, of those things. So we have to continue to, to, to increase, improve agriculture. So, you know, Guyana is very vulnerable because we are below the sea and coast, um, the, the ocean, the, the sea level. And sometimes you have to ensure that you have proper facilities because in Guyana and other parts of the Caribbean, we are, very, we are the second most disaster prone area. And we have to ensure that we put the necessary infrastructure in place. That is why you have seen a massive budgetary allocation in the agriculture sector, right? You have seen a massive bu bu budgetary allocation in the agriculture sector. So we have seen we have moved budgetary allocation from $3 billion mm -hmm. in 2019 to now about $24 billion in the agriculture sector alone, yeah. leaving out what other agencies, what central government have been putting in other sectors, in the regions and so. So what we are doing this, we are, for example, we are procuring more pumps. We are building more canals, rehabilitating more canals. We are rehabilitating more sluices around the country. So these things help us to mitigate flooding because it's very important that we get proper drainage facilities and at the same time get proper irrigation facilities. From now to next year, mm -hmm. by the end of this year, we might have dry weather, so we'll need proper irrigation. You understand? That is why we, if we want to develop the agriculture sector, then we have to continue to develop the DNI structure, the DNI infrastructure. And you'll see shortly, the president and the vice president, both of them talk about the massive work that we plan to do. Very shortly, we'll start um, other hope like canals around the country, Region 5, Region 6, Region 3. Right now, as I'm speaking, we have over 10 pump stations. Massive pump stations are being built across the country. These will help farmers tremendously, right? Because we only can depend on the tide for drainage. We have to have 24-hour pumping system. Yeah, yeah. And that is why we have been looking at and doing across this country. So you'll see massive expenditure will continue in this sector mm -hmm. because DNI is important. DNI is a life, what line for agriculture in our country. Thank so you. right now, as you are speaking, yes, we started to do the brackish water and the prance program going on on the coast. And in the hinterland, it's not so feasible to do the brackish water shrimp or even the prawns mm -hmm. because you have to have brackish water yeah. and you don't have the kind of water there. But what we'll be doing, we'll be doing aquaculture, fish farming. And we have already started, the president started the um, rolling out of the cage culture. And right now, as I am speaking, there are large tambeki in those cages mm -hmm. where the village are, um, are getting in Lake State, marine cage, uh, yeah. marine cage mm -hmm. and, and kapui. We have, we have already received from the Chinese 50 marine cages. And we have 30 persons will visit China in another few weeks, uh, two weeks from now, and they will be trained to operate these cages. Mm -hmm. And we'll have for more, I will ask some other um, donor agency, and in next year's budget, these, cage, or these cages will be placed in places like Region 2, Region 3, Region 5, Region 6, in the hinterland especially, to boost the village economy there. And that will help tremendously. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, in all in all, and this is a success story. The brackish water shrimp production for us in Guyana is a success story. What we are doing in Guyana 
is being replicated in places like Barbados. Imagine Barbados. Barbados economy that is built in tourism mostly. Yeah. Now it's going thing like brackish water shrimp. And we had our technical people, guy, went to Barbados, set up that yeah. for them. Yeah. Imagine rice production. Trinidad started, we have supplied Trinidad over 100 tons of seed paddy to start rice production once again in Trinidad and Tobago. So you could see the influence yeah. that we are having across the Caribbean. So I don't know why you mentioned those three areas because I was that in there and made a commitment, yes, mm. we will expand it there. But uh, in all across this country. Yeah. I went to Buxton, I went to Ithaca, I went to Crabble Creek and different parts of the country. So what I am doing now, the same program that we have at Manripo, mm. we are replicating across the country. And I, when I, the last time I went to Manchester, uh, Lancaster, Liverpool, I spoke there and I told the young people to form themselves in the group and I will make the shade house available to them and I will help them with the expertise to develop it mm -hmm. so that they can have the program going on there. And this will go right and under this the will go, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And this will rep, be replicated across this country yeah. so that our young people can continue in agriculture. That is my meaning. When I leave this uh, Ministry of Agriculture, we must have young, energetic, vibrant young people mm -hmm. who are technically sung. Not only to sit behind a desk and push agriculture, but be there practically yeah. so that we can be food secure. Mm. That's the main thing, to be food secure. Yeah. Our president has a, that, 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 that's a vision that we have. Mm -hmm. We have seen what have happened over the last three and a half years mm -hmm. in the pandemic. Yeah. Many countries that have large sum of money were unable to procure food mm -hmm. because there was a scarcity of food. Mm -hmm. We are producing 60% of the food that we are consuming, but we want to produce all the food. That is why we are going to things like corn and soya. We are going to think to wheat, uh, wheat trial, right, so that we can produce these things, you understand, and make it more accessible to our population at a cheaper cost. Mm -hmm. And I think that in another five years from now, Guyana will be uh, once again the breadbasket. Another three years from now, because every single day I have been bombarded with requests, not only from Guyanese, but across the uh, Caribbean country. And I can tell you, when I went to Barbados, or went to Trinidad and Tobago, people were eager to say, oh, I heard about you as the Minister of Agriculture in Guyana. Well, you, you did that influence, I'm just saying about. Yeah. Because these things are being talked about in various countries, right? In the, the regional newspaper, our programs are being published there. So people know what Guyana is doing. And they are eager to get the support from Guyana to develop their self. Yes, and uh, we have had, we have had recently, we have had, a, 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 what do you call it, a, an analysis done. The last ministerial task force meeting I've had with my colleagues around the Caribbean, we did a report for the CARICOM Heads of Government meeting and I think we are progressing nicely. I'm very optimistic by 2025, we can reduce the food input bill by 25% by, in, in that. So that shows that the work that the ministerial task force are being tasked with by the CARICOM heads of government is coming out fruitful. Is there any legislation that we're doing in relation to that? We are looking to, to we, are, we have had discussion with many countries to look at the um, sanitary and phytosanitary um, problem and the non-tariff barriers to re remove those mm -hmm. so that we have free access among the Caribbean countries. And no timeline with that? No, well, we are working and our president at the last CARICOM heads of government meeting say he's willing mm -hmm. to host a forum in Guyana to look at technical pro problems to remove those.